All right, switching language. So uh, AOSP. How many of you heard about AOSP before? All right. So uh, today in this very quick uh, presentation, I'm going to show you how is it like to hack into AOSP. Before starting, I just want to give you a quick overview about what I'm doing. So actually, I work for uh, Vaden. And in Vaden, although we are a software company that we are doing nothing but software, we have also section for hardware geeks and people that like to hack into stuff. We have this guy, for example, who built his own board. And this guy, for example, he has an uh, interesting story. So in, uh, on April 1st, he placed a mouse in a known workbench. And whenever anyone was trying to touch this mouse, it was running away. The reason behind it, he placed some wheels and infrared sensor. Whenever anyone comes closer to the mouse, the mouse just ran away. And that's the hardware part. But for me, I also like to do some interesting stuff, aside from software, which is hacking into Android. Probably I didn't start that um, like when I joined Vaden, but I started this previous on that, but uh, I get a good support to do that as a side job for the community. So what is it like to hack Android? Let's start by talking about the benefits. What, is, what are the benefits of hacking Android? So you might ask yourself, why would I contribute? Why would I release a contribution in an, the Android open source project? Basically, sometimes you just have some annoying bugs that you want to fix. And this is the only way of doing it, to communicate with Google. So Android is, of course, hosted by Google. And the only way to communicate with Google engineers uh, is to fix some known bugs. If you fix some bugs, you eventually will learn and will learn a lot. Because reading uh, code written by Googlers and written by the community all over the world, it's literally written by people from all around the world. You will definitely learn a lot. And I have to say that if you fix only one bug, if you just fix one single bug and place it in your resume, that's more than enough. It's a big boost in your uh, resume that you have a public contribution in a public, huge open source operating system used by millions around the world. So this is a good boost for your career, for your performance, and uh, for your potential offers in companies. Um, and finally, uh, if you really like the hacking into the open source project, then probably you will also eventually try to hack your own features and propose your own features to be part of the essential operating system. So how to get started or how is it like to do that? Actually, um, building your own uh, operating system or building your own version of uh, Android has a learning curve. At the beginning, you start with very simple hacks, and then eventually you develop your tools. Um, but the idea here is that you can also create your own custom uh, image, which means that uh, running a custom hardware or a custom version on your own existing hardware, or probably be creative and create robots or embedded devices and so on. So um, this is one of the ways of doing it. Another way is possibly uh, having your own custom uh, ROM, for example, uh, getting rid of annoying apps installed by default on uh, common devices, or having a ROM way which uh, comes built in with uh, default apps that you can ship to potential users. Uh, also effects, maybe boot screen, bootloader, and so on. And finally, if you're an uh, embedded engineer and you want to create your own robot, for example, nowadays, uh, we can see that uh, a lot of people started to do that, actually, and uh, started to use Android uh, operating system into their own custom robots to control the robot and so on. Actually, um, the AOSP stuff here that I'm talking about is part of uh, a five days course that I used to give at uh, Information Technology Institution. And those guys, the audience, were engineers. And on year 2013, one of the engineers, uh, or a group of the engineers, came up with a device um, that, or, or a software that they put into the car. 
and it's fu uh, fully written with a custom Android, and it boots in a matter of fraction of seconds that loads essentially what they need exactly. So normally the boot step for Android or the boot time for Android operating system takes a lot of time, but they decided that they want to have a very quick boot, remove any unneeded stuff, remove browser, remove uh, telecommunication, all of that stuff, and just focus on what's needed. So yeah, this is one more item. And finally, like you can just hack it your own way. So to get started, uh, actually, it's uh, an operating system. So uh, downloading the source code might take a little bit more time than expected. And if this is the uh, size of, <laughs> if this is the size of uh, the source code, so probably you can imagine the size of the compiled source code. Usually you might need to use an external hard disk for that, right? Uh, you w wouldn't want to disturb your own hard disk. This is practically how most people do it. Um, and one more thing, so how can I import 12 gigabyte of source code into an IDE? So usually um, when you develop something, you, dev you download an, an open source project, you just try to open it in a Maven project, in Eclipse, in IntelliJ, in some IDE, but how can you open an operating system in IDE? This is also one of the challenges. And this is basically what I'm going to talk about. Of course, I don't have much time, so I'm gonna go over every, like scratch the surface of every single point quickly to just give you a quick overview about how to get started. All right? So uh, this is a summary of basically what you would do normally to hack an, um, a version of Android after downloading the source code. So uh, first of all, getting the, actually the source code, downloading it, how to download it. This is one of the questions. Where is the source code? And then the second, and my, from my point of view, this is the most important point, understanding the structure. Where is what? How to do what? And so on. And then uh, understanding the build environment to be able to build custom modifications. And then uh, start to learn on how to modify the built-in apps, add your own apps, remove apps, and so on. And then also do the same with native apps. So there are Android, normal Android apps, and there are also some native apps that you might want to uh, modify. And then understand the Android framework. So um, this is something also interesting to modify the, how layers work, how the framework look like, how the theme and so on. And then also you can uh, manipulate the startup process. So remove unneeded services, add your own services and so on. Finally, uh, the security and user permission, which is something that also you might be interested into learning it to understand how security work in Android. All right, so let's start by getting the source code. I'm, again, of course, not gonna go over all those steps. I'm gonna scratch the surface quickly because of the time. So how to get the source code? How many of you is an Android developer already? All right, what is your primary source for getting official documentation for Android development? Excellent, developer.android.com. Every Android developer knows this website, but today we are not an Android developer. We are an open source, open uh, operating system developer. So we are not gonna go to developer.android.com, we are going to go to source.android.com. So this is the first URL you need to make yourself uh, familiar with and you need to remember. Secondly, uh, you also want to uh, understand how code lines work if you are intending intending to uh, merge your modification and publish your modifications or patches into the main repository. This is an optional step. If your intention is simply modifying the operating system and building your own custom role, ROM, then you can ignore this. But generally, I would start from this link. You don't have to memorize this link, just go to source.android.com and search there. So let's, let's open those links and see how they look like. So I have here source. 
let me increase the font a bit. So here I have source.android.com. And as you can see, it, for, for those of you who dealt with developer.android.com, you will find it familiar. It has um, those important tabs which tell you about everything. Uh, compatibility, which is one interesting uh, thing that Google released uh, to make sure that your hardware, if you are, are willing to create your own custom hardware, you can make sure that the custom Android built you built is compatible with uh, the hardware and they work perfectly together. Google will just give you a certificate like, yes, this stamp, this is good, or no, this is not a good match. But yeah, other than that, I would go normally for the tab called source, and then read through it. The English here is pretty, pretty simple. It gives you bullet points step by step what to do exactly. Normally, to get started, you would need a Linux machine or a Mac machine. Recently, Mac machine support was also um, improved a lot and unfortunately not for Windows users but yeah so if you read through this um, you can start by downloading and building um, here it gives you an overview about what what is the hardware requirements it tells you for example at least 100 gigabyte of free disk space which is uh, essential during the build process because even though you are building a 40 gigabyte of data at the end but during the build process you will make some cache and some chunks um, and this is nice to accelerate the development later on, later on so the idea here it creates chunks and when you modify a specific chunk it doesn't recompile everything it only recompile this specific chunk the the first compilation time on my machine here which is an i7 processor uh, takes approximately overnight <laughs> But, uh, but then once I watch some down and once I start to make a small tiny modification in the framework, it probably take a few seconds. And here it gives you a software requirement, so operating system. You might need a Linux machine, Ubuntu preferably, or if you are a Mac user, then Mac is also good now. Also, um, Java, K packages, and so on, and then how to get started, how to establish your build environment, how to download the source, install a Rebo, uh, call this URL, and it gives you pretty much all the commands. Just copy paste into a terminal and you are done. I'm pretty sure all of you know what is terminal, right? So just copy paste into a terminal, depending on what is your machine, and you are pretty much done. So up till now, you really don't care or you don't rely on external uh, devices. You can pretty much do everything just by following this nice guide. Um, just to give you an overview, this is um, the build lines I, could, uh, I told you about. So this tells you about how the build process work. And as you can see, it's very simple, not complicated, easy. And yeah, if you really are intending to, to submit your batches, which is I really recommend. If you just submit one only patch, you'll be very happy. It will take a lot of time because uh, they will keep rejecting your patch, telling you like you're missing a test case, you're missing a line, you're missing a code, you're missing a document uh, comment, and so on. So be patient, submit your patch, and eventually you will find yourself fluent with this process. And finally, this is the last link, which is uh, I opened already, which is how to prepare your uh, build environment. So um, the build environment use make file, and finally you would launch um, uh, the the engineered part. And yes, it's launch, not launch. Uh, there is breakfast as well, command. But breakfast command is not by Google; it's by uh, Cyanogen mod. If you heard about. But yeah, so there are uh, three types of build types: like user, user debug, and engineering. Now to come to uh, those parts. Uh, engineer is usually what you would use because uh, this is um, the, the build that doesn't contain security, that allows you to debug, that doesn't contain pretty much anything except just for debugging mode. And then if you are confident about your work, then you go to debug, which is uh, allowing you to debug only. And finally, user, which is the final release. Uh, and also Google released an interesting uh, IDE that build for each device. So let's go back to the presentation. This is how 
how the architecture of operating system look like. So just briefly to go over uh, how things look like, what, what are you gonna build? This is the internal of operating system. Probably some of you already saw this, but probably also you didn't uh, take a deep look at how the, it looked like. So basically, Android is a Linux-based operating system, so it consists of a kernel. And here, I just want to announce that kernel, you probably don't want to modify that at all. If you want to modify the kernel, then this is not the right track for you. You are in the wrong presentation. Modifying the kernel is a completely different topic and you would go somewhere else to know how to modify the kernel. So normally, we as uh, uh, Android hackers, we just take the kernel, the compiled kernel as it is, and just place it here along with our own custom uh, kernel hacks to or drivers uh, if we are using external uh, drivers. And then the second layer, which is the libraries. And each one of those libraries, like SQLite, like uh, Media Framework, and so on, each one of those libraries is, again, a completely separate project. So if you are not happy with SQLite, then go to SQLite and download the source code and decide what you want to do with it. But here also we take uh, the compiled SQLite version and just replace it as it is. And the important concept here is to understand the difference between host machine and target machine. So here my computer is called the host machine. What I'm building for, the Android hardware that I'm building for is called the target machine, right? And um, you need to understand that, for example, compiling SQLite is not something that you want to compile for a Mac, for example, like my machine. You want to compile it for the processor and architecture, the target architecture of your uh, target machine. Um, also, there is the Android runtime, for example, the Dalvik virtual machine. So the Dalvik virtual machine is something that you want to compile and determine how to compile it here. But for example, the software development kit is something that you don't really care about compiling because nobody is developing inside the Android device, right? You are developing in your machine, or probably this is not your work, you don't care about compiling the SDK, you just care about compiling the Dalvik virtual machine or taking a built-in copy. Finally, the second layer is the framework where you want to modify the framework, and the first layer which contains the apps, the apps, right? And when you download the source code, this is how it looks like. So, uh, as I said, Google, introduced a nice IDE tool that you go to each of those folders, subfolder, and you just uh, call the line and it will automatically produce a script to uh, inject this folder inside an IDE. So this folder is something that you want to understand and then eventually uh, you just want to know where is what, where to modify apps, where to modify framework, where to modify build process and so on. And then you can uh, inject this into uh, an Eclipse or IntelliJ and so on, uh, depending on your preference. So, um, it, the build environment that you would like to uh, know about is basically how to mo modify the make file and so on, and then um, how to create custom apps or uh, remove uh, or add pre-installed apps, make your uh, ROM with uh, pre installed apps, and then have native apps. Finally, or one step before finally, Android framework, how to modify the theme or the internal architecture of your Android, and uh, add your own custom layers or remove unneeded layers. If there are some services, for example, that you don't want them to run. Um, also, you can modify the custom boot or custom boot screen. Many people are interested on having their own branded custom boot screen instead of showing Android. Um, and the startup process. So probably you want to know a bit about Linux to know about this. I have one minute left. They are putting a lot of pressure. So please, if you have questions, uh, let me know. And uh, yeah, I'm going to stay here anyway. I'm going to speak next. <laughs> so please stick around if you want to uh, hear about web apps and uh, Web components and offline first. If not, please let me know your, your questions. We have still one minute left. So, questions? Yeah, go ahead. Ah, OSP ne couvre que les, les, les téléphones Nexus, c'est ça? 
alors que Cyanogène, ça fait les autres marques ou... C'est quoi la différence entre les deux projets AOSP, le, le projet de, de, de Google, dans leur dépôt, ils ne, ils ne gardent que les, de quoi compiler pour un téléphone Nexus, pas pour les, les autres marques. Et Cyanogène, c'est la même chose qu'AOSP, mais avec d'autres types de téléphones ou il... Quelle est la différence entre les deux projets Entre AOSP et Cyanogène Uh, right. So the question is, what is the difference between AOSP and Nexus? So uh, I would say there is no difference except in the device drivers. So they just put specific drivers for specific hardware. So for example, Nexus 7 comes with a specific camera or a specific screen or specific uh, Bluetooth device. So they inject specific drivers and that's it. Other than that, it's a pure AOSP. For Cyanogen mod, it's different. They put their own themes, their own uh, framework modifications, their own apps. They remove some apps from Android and so on. So uh, Cyanogen Mod decided to just fork the project totally and re-engineer how the framework worked a little bit, not big. Is that answering your question? Yeah, thanks. One last question. Yeah, go ahead. Hello? Um, je suis pas sûr que je comprends. Combien de temps D'accord. Alors normalement, pour uh, pour faire le engineer version, uh, ça prend beaucoup du temps. Si tu commences pour la première fois, elle peut prendre peut-être uh, 8, 8 heures ou 9 heures. Mais mais après ça, si 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 tu commences avec engineer version, elle va uh, elle va pas prendre beaucoup du temps parce que normalement, tu vas recompiler simplement une seule partie de la projet. Mais finalement, quand tu es prêt et tu es sûr que c'est ça la version normale, alors tu auras une autre 8, uh, 8 heures ou quelque chose comme ça. Mais, mais ce qui se passe dans les grandes entreprises, qu'ils uh, uh, ils achètent des serveurs pour faire la compilation, et normalement, il y en a des, des serveurs comme ça, comme chez Amazon par exemple, ils prennent des secondes des secondes pour toute la compilation, parce qu'ils ont beaucoup de processeurs et de beaucoup de, de RAM et tout ça. Alors, merci beaucoup, merci pour, euh, pour attendre, et euh, oui, euh, and if you like to hear about uh, offline first apps, then please stick around in 15 minutes, I'm gonna stay here. Thank you. <laughs>